Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. Welcome in, Winning Cures Everything. It's Thursday, May 13th. I'm Gary. I'm Chris. And I'm dying. <laughs> Kyle is, uh, is no, you know, blessing I'm us with dying. his presence, even though oh, he, yeah. is, uh, he is struggling. But he's going to make it through the show. He gave us his oh, word. Yeah. He's in on this thing. So we got yeah, a lot right. to talk about today. We got the AFC East. We got the NFC East. Before we get to any of that, uh, again, introducing Kyle Proviance, SBR's MLB guy, SBR's NFL guy, and on Friday, SBR's NBA guy, I guess. I mean, you're just doing <laughs> man, everything. Man, oh, man. So, yeah, it's good Lord. And you can find him on Twitter at DFS Bachelor, which you can see on your screen. You can also find it in the description of the video below or of the podcast, whichever one you are uh, partaking of this on. And uh, and you can also find his YouTube channel. That would be at DFS Bachelor. Very easy to find. So, uh, of course, Chris and myself, you can find us, winningcureseverything.com. Everywhere you need to follow, everywhere you need to subscribe, every show we're on, every appearance, whatever, we post it up there to make it very easy for you to find. So go and check that out, winningcureseverything.com. And for us, we are the SBR College Football Guys. And you can find that, sbrpicks.com slash NCAAF. Uh, also, if you want to see all three of us at any point, you can search out SBR Picks on YouTube, and you will be able to see our bright, shining faces right over there. Right. All right, let's dive into the NFL stuff. Uh, obviously, schedule was released last night. I don't know that there's a lot for us to, to discuss with that as of yet. But it was. At I, least. I would appreciate that because I will tell you, my sorry ass was so. I haven't looked at. I know the Bucks and the Cowboys play the first game, and I think Tom Brady goes back to New England week four. That's about all I know right now, and yep. that is so the, sad because I better. I got to study before tomorrow. So, so the that. first thing I did was check to see um, what it's going to cost me to get into Foxborough, and the cheapest ticket in the house is almost fifteen hundred dollars. Oh my God! It's gonna say, be well. Nuts. I won't be making it to that game. I won't see Thomas <laughs> return. I, I just can't swing that yet. No, You're we, right, we do. Right. We got Browns Chiefs first week, so I mean that should be entertaining. Well, there you go. I think. I wish that was a Sunday night game. I agree. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, me too. That would so, be really good. by the way, there's a whole lot going on. We'll dive into the schedules next week. Uh, we already knew who the teams they were playing were going to be. It, it kind of shows exactly how big the NFL is with the fact that yeah. they can release the order of the games that you already knew were happening, and it just mm-hmm. completely dominates the news cycle. So, big-time right. stuff with that. We will start off today's show with the AFC East, and we're going to start with the Buffalo Bills. Buffalo Bills went 13-3 and last year. They looked good. Josh Allen boosted his completion percentage by like 10% last year with the addition of Stephon yeah. Diggs at wide receiver. That was the... Biggest driving force in them becoming a, a massive contender last yeah. season. And, you know, obviously, uh, Chris and myself, if you watch this for any amount of time, you have heard us talk glowingly about Sean McDermott. He is a fantastic coach, defensive-minded, but he understands what it takes to win in the NFL. you got to have playmakers. Stephon Diggs is that playmaker for them. They haven't been able to find a running game. Don't know that you necessarily need it all that much. But uh, but they're looking around. You know, we'll, we'll see what they end up doing. They have done some interesting things with their draft this year, so we are going to talk about that. Uh, their needs were edge rusher, cornerback, defensive tackle, tight end, and safety. So we'll start off. They drafted two straight edge rushers. First round, mm-hmm. they got Gregory Russo out of Miami. He opted out last season. I think had he played and, and put up any kind of similar production to what he did the season before, I think he probably would have been a top 15 pick. But either way, you only saw one season of it, and he looks like a monster. Uh, On top of that, second round, they got Carlos Basham Jr. from Wake Forest, who is an absolute beast. He's a stud. Uh, Round three, offensive tackle Spencer Brown out of Northern Iowa. Love that pick. Chris and I have watched FCS for a while. That guy's a, a hoss as well. Uh, Offensive tackle Tommy Doyle out of Miami, Ohio in the fifth round. Marquez Stevenson out of Houston, wide receiver in the sixth round. Also sixth round, safety DeMar Hamlin out of Pitt. Uh, Round six, Rashad Wild Goose out of Wisconsin, cornerback. Best name in the entire draft, Wild Goose. And round seven, offensive guard Jack Anderson out of Texas Tech. I am a fan of what they did. I like this. They they hit on a lot of their needs. You know, you can get a running back 
at any point, undrafted, whatever. Right. So I'm not worried about that one. But uh, but yeah, I mean they they hit basically everything else. They took some chances on some guys that I think can be absolute studs. I like what the Bills did here. Uh, I do as well. In my in my mind, before the draft started, because Buffalo is one of those teams without really a whole lot of needs, a little bit of edge rushing help. But I was like, man, Travis Atn would look fantastic lining up next to Josh Allen. Josh Allen is one of my favorite young players in the league. I absolutely love Josh Allen. I grew up. Look, I was a 49er fan, but I loved those Jim Kelly K Gun teams with Andre Reid and Lofton. I love. So I have the Bills have a special place in my heart, and I absolutely love Josh Allen. I like what they did in this draft. I would have liked them see see them get a couple more, something on the interior of that defensive line. They were the worst red zone rushing defense in the league last year. I know their defense overall was good, but when it got close, they were giving up far too many rushing touchdowns. You want to make these guys throw, especially when you have corners like Levi Wallace and Tredavious White, who might be, you know, could be the second, third best corner in the league, you know, Ramsey, Gilmore, White, however you want to rank them. Uh, but I like what they did here. If Rousseau does any, it was a big problem for Buffalo getting pressure on the quarterback. All of their edge rushers are 30 years or above. So they needed to get younger and more athletic. And I think they did exactly that. Never hurts to bring over some big boys to help your quarterback. Look, it's no secret. Josh Allen is the end, the end, the beginning, the middle. (laughs) He is their run game, their passing game. He is everything for this offense. So you got to do everything you can to protect them, especially in the red zone. I mean, I know they tried out Zach Moss in the red zone and Singletary, and those are two younger, talented guys, but they're kind of meh. So I wouldn't have mind seeing a running back maybe two later on. That would be the only knock. But overall, I think they addressed some needs. Again, they didn't have a ton of them. Buffalo's going you know, to be right back where they were last year, contending for the AFC and contending to go to the Super Bowl. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I like what they did as well. This is a team that didn't really have a lot of needs, and the one need they did hit uh, half. You talked about it, and 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 I've repeated this multiple times throughout these things. Is they needed they needed front help, defensive front yeah. help. This just wasn't the great draft to get that. So mm-hmm. you know, but maybe they can just make the best that they can. Um, if that's their only glaring hole. Uh, Figure it out through through coaching, through scheming, through through developing guys, and uh, and then and then maybe address it next year when when you might have some some better players coming out of college for it. But but no, I like what they did. This is a one of those situations where when you don't have a lot of needs, you can just take the best player available, and they were able to do that. I think they they got a lot of good talent. And most certainly, yeah. it also uh, off season, you know, free agency. They picked up Matt Breida out of Miami. They, uh, they picked up Jerry Hughes. Uh, Vernon Butler is there uh, as a defensive tackle. Uh, Mario Addison. Like, they drafted A.J. Epinesa last year. Like, they got guys that should be coming into their own, and they picked up some free agents. Like, they, I think the defensive line will end up being yeah. fine. Matt Breida will play one quarter. Let me just tell you, he's well on the 49ers. Right? You're going to get one quarter out of Matt Breida. He's going to sprint. You're like, oh, my God, this is the most explosive running back in the league, and then you'll never see him again. That will happen to Matt Breida. That's but what that, you only need him for one quarter if you got uh, Zach Moss taking a quarter <laughs> and you got uh, Singletary taking a quarter. That's right. You got, you know, whoever. So, yeah. you know, yeah. we'll, we'll see. But I, I do like what they did. I mean, th- this is a mm-hmm. smart-run organization. Uh, yes. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what they do, you know, in the coming years. Like, we'll, we'll yep. see. All right, moving and the on. fans will be back next oh, year with yes. that good football team. Ooh. I mean, how about the great news today, right? <laughs> Vaccinated people don't have to wear their – I get my second awesome. shot in like five days, and I cannot can wait. I cannot wait just to hey, wipe that I'll go card ahead and tell around. You. And, go ahead and tell you how you're feeling today. Uh, is probably how you'll be feeling the day after your shot. Now, Chris had no issues. Uh, hey, it was nothing. Everybody that I know of, including myself, got that second shot, and mm-hmm. the next day, completely worthless. I was really? gunzo. I was, so, I was top of the morning, man. Some would argue that I'm worthless every day, so I'm not sure much will change, but uh, there's that. You know. <laughs> I, can, I can buy it. I can buy it. All right, moving on from there, the Miami Dolphins. They went 10-6 and six last year. Surprise team. Everything looks good under Brian Flores. Um, you know, they have some needs. Obviously, this is a young team. Uh, still not sure what they were doing by cutting Calvin Oy, but um, okay, you know, I mean, if, if you got a plan, why not stick to it? You know, they, they cut him, and they uh, and, and basically the Patriots pick him up for like a bag of chips, as Chris would say. But, uh, but they needed tackle help. They needed wide receiver help, center, running back, cornerback. And uh, honestly... What I'm seeing looks pretty good. Here's what they did in the draft. In the first round, they had two picks. They got Jalen Waddell at number six out of Alabama wide receiver. Edge rusher Jalen Phillips out of Miami, Florida. Uh, 
number one or two as far as edge rushers go, and I think that that was a really good pick. Uh, second round, they got safety Javon Holland out of Oregon. Again, stud player, can make plays. Uh, offensive tackle Liam Eichenberg out of Notre Dame in the second round as well. Uh, he's an offensive tackle. Tight end Hunter Long out of Boston College. And don't sleep on this kid. He was used mm-hmm. a lot at Boston College, but obviously – if you're playing football at Boston College, not a lot of people are going to know your name. This guy can absolutely play. He's uh, he's going to be a stud for them. They got him in the third round. And then you had two seventh rounders to take flyers on. Larnell Coleman, offensive tackle out of Massachusetts. Not going to lie, I got no idea who this kid is. And uh, Jared Dokes, running back out of Cincinnati in the seventh round. Um, yeah, I'm a fan of this. I, I, think, I think the yeah. Dolphins are showing that they are a well-run organization again. They really are, and you just got to be so excited if you're a Dolphins fan and seeing how this has turned around since that pile of uselessness Adam Gase left the team. And they they knocked it out of the park. I love that first round. Jalen Waddle's going to fit beautifully with what Tua does, and of course they have a rapport together. Phillips, you know, you, you're right, the first or second best pass rusher in the draft. That defense was already really good last year for Miami. Love the Liam Eikenberg pick. Bring in, again, we talk about it, bring in those Notre Dame offensive linemen, protect Tua. They signed Will Fuller in free agency, so now Tua's going to have a full complement. You know, you'll have Will Fuller for about four games until he gets hurt, unless he's doing <laughs> steroids again. And you'll have Devontae Parker for about eight games until his – Yep. His hamstring is pulled, and hopefully Jalen Waddle will stay healthy there. And uh, Mike Kosicki, so I, I like what the Dolphins did. I thought they did a fantastic job, and they just continue to knock it out of the park year after year. And, you know, of course, they can thank Bill O'Brien for that because they're going to have assets up the wazoo for that uh, trade of uh, Laramie Tunsil, and uh, that is what it is. And uh, all the Houston fans can look at Miami and see what could have been and look what Miami is and be heartbroken. Love what the Dolphins did. Team on the rise. Another team that has have a soft spot for because, you know, Dan Marino, that's who I wanted to be when I was a kid. So uh, <laughs> this is the last year that they have all the extra assets from Houston, though, right? Like, they're right. done after yes. this. I believe so. Yeah, I believe so. Merit. No free picks. Um, Brian Flores and those guys seem to be doing an unbelievable job there. I, I like what they yeah. did. I think they've got a lot of talent. Um, I'm curious to see how it actually plays out on the field. Uh, they they just watching them play football every week looks like a struggle. Okay, mm-hmm. they play bad teams badly and they play good teams well, and it's really strange. They don't beat anybody really bad, and and they kind of always look like they're struggling to get first downs offensively. Um, it, it, they play tough, hard nosed defensive football, and they're tough to score on. I just wonder at what point in time that's going to change. They just all, it doesn't matter who the quarterback is always look like they're having hard times getting first. Yeah, I agree. Well, you're right. You're right. hundred percent uh, right. The the GM for them. And Chris no Greer. Ryan Fitzpatrick to save them this year when they, when they can't yeah. throw the ball. So he was going to have to evolve and play better. And that's I, mean, a lot I, of pressure I, I specifically think Jacoby Brissett went there because he thinks he can play there. I think he mm-hmm. went there mm-hmm. overstaying in Indy as a free agent because he, he feels like I got a shot to play here. I can buy that. Uh, Chris Greer is the GM there, by the way. Uh, this guy yeah. is a wheeling, dealing son of a gun. Like, he is yeah. he has made super smart moves. Um, you know, was the director of college scouting all the way up until 2015 and took over as general manager in 2016. He's only worked two places, uh, with the Dolphins and with the Patriots. And, and he did go. most of it in scouting – but since he's been made general manager, man, they have made some good moves. Um, I mean, I'm a fan of what they're doing. Fan well, of I mean, what they're when you doing. can fleece Bill O'Brien, I mean, that's yeah. that's kind of like stealing, though. I feel like <laughs> I feel like more people should have been able to do it. The fact that like uh, an organization that hired Cliff Kingsbury and the Dolphins were able to do it, um, I feel like I feel like other guys. Yeah, should have a lot been able of other people could have done it. Uh, other people overthought mm-hmm. it. They were like, wait, wait, wait. There's there's a catch here in there. There's something right. going on with this Hopkins trade. What's up? Yeah. Like, so yeah, exactly. That's that had to be what was up because I, I cannot believe that Hopkins didn't end up in in New England for uh, for a second yeah. round. Well, pick. they were yeah. gonna they made it clear they weren't gonna trade him in divi- in in conference. Yeah, I mean, yeah, basically, I suppose. basically fleecing Bill O'Brien's like winning like the spelling bee at the Special Olympics, you know, for one of us. That's basically <laughs> what happened there. Do they have? I don't. I don't even know if that exists. Yeah, that's an iffy joke. It's real that's, iffy. But you know what? Real iffy. This country laughed, is but... so pussify lately. It's time to toughen up and get over ourselves. I've had enough of it. Participation trophies in every damn sport. Like, don't make a joke about this. That. Oh, shut the hell up. Let's rock and roll. It's time to <laughs> toughen up, America. We're silly. That's why China's gonna pass us because we're silly and weak. Yes. Time to toughen up. I love it. I. 
Love it. Moving on to the New England Patriots, it is time. It's time for go. Chris to get to talk about the Alabama Crimson Tide and all the draft picks that Bill Belichick has used <laughs> on Nick Saban's players, and I am excited about it. Uh, the Patriots mm-hmm. did not look great last year, but Cam Newton obviously looked way better before he had COVID than after. Don't know if that was in effect or, or if people just figured out what he was doing. Obviously, we'll find out some this season if Cam can get back to what he was before he uh, he caught the bug and things went kind of downhill after that. So they he did look kind of like I mean we were talking about him for the MVP after the first four weeks, weren't we? Oh, you know, really? Not, really? not not MVP, but he was he. Yeah. We we thought the Patriots' offense was going to be just fine. Yes, uh-huh. and and instead uh-huh. it went way downhill very quickly. Yeah. Um, and then they come out and they spend the uh-huh. most money in the history of the NFL the first day of free agency. They lock up dudes that they want. They got weapons. Uh, they don't have a ton of wide receiver guys, like super skill guys, but their tight end position is locked down, man. No problems there whatsoever. So along top, or alongside of that, something that they've never done in free agency, they also had a really good draft, at least according to yeah. draft experts. You know, I'm. We'll go with what they needed first: wide receiver, quarterback, cornerback, running back, linebacker. So basically, they needed skill players. And they needed some help, you know, on defense because they're getting a little older, you know, a little long in the tooth. They need some young, mm-hmm. fresh guys. And they knocked all of them out of the park. I mean, just killed it. Uh, first round, mm-hmm. they take Mac, Dr- uh, Mac Jones out of Alabama. Second round, Christian Barmore, interior defensive lineman out of Alabama. Edge rusher in the third round, Ronnie Perkins out of Oklahoma. Fantastic value pick there. Uh, round four, running back Ramondre, uh, Ramondre Stevenson out of Oklahoma. Again, awesome pick there. I think he's going to be awesome, um, especially if you can put him in with all the other running backs that they got. He doesn't have to be the guy. Linebacker Cameron McGrone out of Michigan in the fifth round. Sixth round, Joshua Bledsoe, uh, cornerback out of Missouri. Offensive tackle William Sherman out of Colorado in the sixth round. And then they take a flyer on a guy that I really, really like. In the seventh round, Trey Nixon out of uh, UCF. He's a wide receiver. So, I I think they kind of hit on this draft, man. I, this is my favorite draft of all of these teams. If for no other reason than I understand the strategy, I know where they're going, and I think they got some of the best players at, at the spots where they drafted them. Okay, so I'm going to disagree just a little bit. Now, I, I don't hate what they did, but here's where the Patriots' needs were coming into the draft. Quarterback, 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 wide receiver, wide receiver, wide receiver. First of all, Cam Newton cannot hit the broad side of a barn. He's the worst pocket pat. Last year, watching him try to throw from the pocket a timing route to Julian Edelman or any of those guys, it's just painful to watch. I, I would take Ben DiNucci from the Cowboys over Cam Newton as my quarterback right now. I'm dead serious. Cam Newton needs to be like Jacoby Brissett and Taysom Hill. Goal line, option routes, maybe play a little tight end. The dude can't throw the football. So I thought New England did a great job taking Mac Jones at 15. It was the obvious choice. They had to do it. All the moves they made in free agency, you can get all the tight ends you want in the world. You can have Tony Gonzalez and Travis Kelsey or, you know, Ozzy Newsom. Cam Newton can't get him the football. Mac Jones can. So I do like that pick. My problem is, who the hell is Mac Jones going to throw to besides those tight ends? Nikhil Harry, look, I know there's some upside there, but he hasn't looked like much, and a lot of that could be attributed to uh, bad quarterback play. And then what else? What else am I seeing on the outside? Who is going to scare them up top? It's just going to be – so I'm just supposed to believe that Hunter Henry, who's had injury issues, and John U. Smith, who's had injury issues, are going to carry the Patriots to the playoffs and in, uh, in a division with the Dolphins and the Bills. I'm not buying it. Uh, I would – I think – look, I like the players. I think Barmore's a good player. I love the pick of Mac Jones. I think they nailed that 100% on the head to take this team serious. He's got to be their starter day one. Cam Newton can never step onto that field as their starting quarterback, or you cannot take them seriously. That's a JV offense if Cam Newton is your quarterback. So I love the first-round pick. The rest of it, I think they needed more help on the outside, so I think they missed the mark a little bit. Their defense, it's going to be a great defense. They're going to be healthy, and we all know Belichick's defensive mind. This defense is going to be tough to score on. Do they have enough weapons to score enough points to get them over the hump? It's a little iffy for me, and I just don't I just don't see any explosivity in that offense whatsoever. I, I cannot believe that you were going to sit there and talk trash mm-hmm. about the wide receivers after they went and got Kendrick Bourne and Nelson Aguilar, <laughs> and they got Jacoby Myers. Yeah, they got, Nelson Aguilar. They got I mean, Christian Wilkerson. And like I said, I, I like Trey Nixon probably more than most people, but uh, 
But yeah, he's no, I, I see where you're coming pick, from. Gary. I know. He, it's a he's flyer. He's a seventh round pick. This is a guy you he's like. Ne- they don't never need know. flyers. They need receivers. <laughs> yeah. When they moved up in the second round, my first thought was, this is Rondell Moore. He's right. they, they want versatile guys that can play multiple positions. Rondell Moore is a utility knife that can be in that that, that backfield. He can come out of the backfield. He's, he could have taken Julian's spot. Thing. Yes, um, I, I would have loved to have seen them take a chance at, at Terrence Marshall right there, something like that. The fact that they took another defensive lineman in, in a not good defensive line draft is is just ridiculous. They got all their defensive players back except for uh, Patrick Chung uh, from from the the COVID opt outs. This defense is going to be substantially better than they were last year without yeah. drafting or signing anybody because they had like five guys that were starters that opted out last year that are right. all going to be back. Okay. Right. So their only defensive need was safety. All right. They didn't move up to get more, which is what I thought they were might do. And I would have been okay with that, but they need receiver help. And that that's, they, they don't need another defensive tackle. They need yeah. receiver help. That's what yeah. they should have done. Especially in that division. Who's the team that's running the ball down your throat in the AFC East? Yeah, the you're Dolphins definitely not, not worried about the Jets, the Dolphins, or the Bills or, running the football on you. Bingo. Not at Bingo. all. You are Josh correct Allen might, Josh Allen is the only run threat, and he's only going to run the ball outside. Yep, exactly. That's uh, pretty nuts. Pretty nuts to think so, about. So, I, I, I'm not going to question Bill. I just work under the understanding that Bill's never going to draft well. Okay? He mm-hmm. just not. He hasn't my entire life of watching him coach football. He just cocks up the draft. His free agent signings are usually better than anybody else's. Most people don't think so when he does it. And then afterwards, it always works out. But his drafting is just not great. It's just not. I mean, he did knock one sixth-round pick out of the park, if I uh, remember correctly, just back in the day. Well, yeah, no, he he (laughs) takes a lot of bites. he He takes a lot of bites at the apple. All right. And he drafts a lot of guys, but all of his best draft picks are all these late round guys. Yeah. He can't go in the year he went and got Nikhil Harry as his number one wide receiver in the first round. That year, there was like three great wide receivers that went right behind him, all in the second round. What are you doing, Bill? You yeah, took we, the one bust out we of were all very, the good wide receivers that went that year. We the were very one confused. Bust? We were we were very confused. I wonder how how Harry would be if he had not dealt with all those injuries, right? Like, but he right. dealt with injuries in in college as well. Like, it, it, uh, that's fine. That's fine. Let's keep giving the kid excuses. I, that's what I, we did to Sammy Watson, all, Watkins, all his entire career. Is oh, he's not he's not healthy, and then oh, he doesn't have the right system, and oh, he doesn't have the good quarterback, and then oh, and then finally we get him with Andy Reid, fully healthy with the Chiefs, this offensive machine, and he puts up. Okay numbers, good numbers, but not great numbers. And finally, people are like, eh, maybe he just didn't really good. And, and then he has the nerve to say, well, maybe I'll just go to another team and win them a Super Bowl, as if Sammy fucking Watkins is the reason they won the Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah. Get the hell as out of he, he, he bugs the shit out of me. No. He bugs the absolute shit out of me. I just don't understand. But, but this is the bet I've made with Bill, okay? I love the Patriots. I will support Bill. I just never get excited about the draft because I understand that half these guys – aren't even going to make the damn team. They're yeah. just not. Yeah. Well, you got to be stoked with Mac Jones, though, right? You have to be. You have to be. At least it's not Cam Newton starting. It's obviously not going to be uh, who's the other kid that they the everyone that, wanted I'll to see. You, and... let, me, let me tell you what I'm happy about. I'm happy that they didn't move up for him, okay? Yes, if exactly. That's, that's who you land on, you need a quarterback, okay? Mm-hmm. And as long as he's the only quarterback left available out of the five, I'm all right with that. I'm not upset mm-hmm. about it. I don't hate it. He's now my quarterback, and I got to support it. Had they moved up to get him over Fields or, or, or you know, some of those guys, I would have been pissed. I would have been yeah. real pissed. Well, who I wanted was Fields. Who I when all when Dan Orlovsky, who I thought was a piece of shit for reporting the stuff that he reported, <laughs> started doing that. All I kept thinking was, "This is the best news I've ever heard in my life." Please let that man fall. And then when he falls, he's going to have a chip the size of Ohio on his shoulders, and Bill's going to get him, and it's going to change football forever. And we're going to just wreck people. That's all I wanted to happen. Yeah. Yeah. And the Bears yeah. got half smart for the first time in their life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Closing out the AFC East, we're going to move to the New York Jets. And there's never really been good things to talk about with the Jets in uh, in at least a decade. Obviously, when uh, when Ryan was there, you know, you had uh, uh, you had the franchise, you know, uh, Mark, uh, Mark Sanchez. Um, 
you you had all kinds of different stuff going on. This was a good team at one point, and since then, nothing good. But uh, yeah. but you know, and now you got Robert Sala coming in. It looks like a, a new day. It looks like you got two starters in the first round. I mean, lots of stuff. Obviously, they had needs basically everywhere. Um, but quarterback, tackle, cornerback, uh, linebacker, and running back were big needs for them, and uh, and they hit on basically everything. I think. Um, yeah. I mean, I, <laughs> we'll go through this list, but at, aside from the Patriots, I think these guys did the best job in the draft for drafting for need, drafting for value, drafting for potential, everything else. They had a lot of bites of the apple, and and I think they hit on a lot of them. Uh, quarterback Zach Wilson with the number two pick from BYU. Um, you got your guard or tackle, whatever you want him to be, Elijah Vera Tucker out of USC. Uh, also in the first round, they had to move up to get him. But And and while I don't necessarily agree with moving up, because I think you would have been able to get him where they got him. Oh, I disagree if, with that. If that's your guy, like – Go, go do what you do, right? I think too many people need an offensive line, and I think he was mm-hmm. the third best offensive line yeah. in this draft. You're probably yeah, right. He was. Don't go get him. You're not getting him. Definitely the best interior alignment in the draft. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I disagree with you there. I think if they don't move up, he's not there. And you, you might be right about that. Second round, they got Elijah Moore out of Ole Miss. Uh, love that pick. You know, you and mm-hmm. I, Chris, have talked about Elijah Moore a lot. Uh, he is a speedster. He is He's awesome. He's awesome. Uh, running back Michael Carter out of North Carolina. This dude was a beast for them last year, uh, for North Carolina yeah. and Mac Brown and that whole bunch. Uh, so getting him in the fourth round, uh, kind of a steal in my eyes. You know, everybody talked yep. about Javante Williams being the uh, the better of the two. Look, you, you can't convince me of that. Like, both of them were uh, superstars at that school. Round five, this is where you start taking flyers. Safety, Jamie and Sherwood out of Auburn. Uh, he's a playmaker. Cornerback, Michael Carter, the second out of Duke. Um, cornerback, Jason Pinnock out of Pitt. Then you get to the sixth round, Hamsa Naziruddin out of Florida State. Nicely done. <laughs> you got quarterback Brandon like Eccles out of Kentucky and uh, defensive lineman Jonathan Marshall out of Arkansas. All of these guys can play. I, I think the Jets did a pretty good job of scouting and figuring out where they'd be able to get value with, the, with a bunch of these late picks. I mean, they had three picks in the fifth round, three picks in the sixth round, and took a bunch of dudes that, that you have seen actually be able to produce. I, I'm a fan of this. I think they did a, yeah. an outstanding job. Me too. I think it's the best draft in the division. Uh, I always have a soft spot for BYU quarterbacks being a 49er guy, of course, because I love me some Steve Young and even a little bit of Ty Detmer. So I love me some uh, BYU quarterbacks. I don't know a ton about Zach Wilson. I didn't watch a ton of BYU games, but obviously everything I see this guy has upside through the wazoo and he, and he should be really good for the Jets. And obviously he's going to be better than Sam Darnold. Uh, that Michael Carter pick in the fourth round, when I was watching the draft, everyone I was watching had this guy as the best available guy going through the third round. So this seems like a real steal here. And you got to remember, we're talking about a Jets team that was toting the rock with Frank Gore, 457-year-old Methuselah. Frank Gore was their their bulk of their carries. And then, you know, these guys, they bring off the street, Adams and uh, the Michael P. Ryan, I think, or one yeah. of the P. Ryans was got, over there. Somebody, Samaj P. Ryan yeah. or Michael, I don't know which one. So I think they nailed it on the head. Elijah Moore, I love that pick as well. Get some weapons for that offense. I think the Jets nailed it out of the park. The best interior lineman in the draft. A lot of people, I was hearing a lot of people saying Zach Wilson might have more upside than Trevor Lawrence. I don't, I'll leave that up to you guys. You guys are the experts on that. He's, uh, let me, like let me go on and stop you. He's, Zach Wilson is very much boomer bust, right? Um, okay. he, he sees all of these, uh, when, when you watch him play, you can see Patrick Mahomes. You can see, like, this guy that is super athletic. They, I'll tell you what they called him his freshman and sophomore year. He was Mormon Manziel. That's what they called him. Uh, he's he can throw it from any angle. He can run the ball. He's he can scat away from any kind of defensive pressure. He's awesome with that. But his junior year, he had eleven touchdowns and nine interceptions. Didn't play Oof. well against good defenses. And obviously, the BYU schedule last year kind of soft. So it's you can see the potential. Um, sure, he's not necessarily there yet, but I mean, he he's going to be the starter. You got James Morgan behind him and Mike White. Like, that's your other two quarterbacks. Honest he's going to gonna God, be the guy. I watched every NFL game twice for the probably the past 10 years as I cover the NFL. I've never heard of those two players ever <laughs> once in my entire life. I don't know who the fuck they are. I'm dead serious. Who are they? That's I, I got no idea. No idea. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> 
It's crazy. So uh, go go ahead, continue on. I didn't want to uh, you know distract too much. Oh we, no, that, that was it. That was it. I like what you just did. Won it. Won it here. Yeah. And uh, I want to hear Chris bag on Zach Wilson. I feel like that's coming. No, not 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 at all. I'm the Zach Wilson defender. Okay, out of oh, all okay. the guys, we did our live draft. Every one of those guys bagged on 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 uh, from West Lot. Gary, same thing. But they're you know you talked about the the schedule being soft. How many good quarterbacks have we seen come from small schools before where they ended up being just fine? That's ridiculous. The, this kid can make every throw. If he is quote unquote a bust, it's because the Jets organization failed him. All right. That that is that there's no other reason for that other than that. This kid can play. He can make every throw. He's exciting to play. That team is just garbage right now. Okay. Yeah. So while I think they've got some good guys coming in with him, they're all gonna be rookies. All right. They're all gonna be carrying somebody else's shoulder pads for a long time. And those guys have no business making somebody else carry their shoulder pads because they all suck. There's not a playmaker on that roster right now. So yeah. um you know, I, I think he can play. I think he's going to be just fine. I like him a lot. And uh, once again, like I said, I think they got the third best offensive lineman in the draft. I would have loved for that dude to have fallen to, to Cleveland um, or, 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 you know, for Cincinnati to uh, trade back up and, and, and get him something of that nature. But, mm-hmm. um, you know, I, I'm not crazy high on Michael Carter, the running back. Uh, it, it, and my reasoning is this. If there are two running backs that came out of the same college that both ran the hell out of the football very successfully and they run completely different, I just work under the assumption that it was the system, okay? That, 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 that's something that, that North Carolina was just doing better than everybody else. And the odds of them both coming into the NFL and being any good is pretty slim. Okay, it's, it's so, so totally fair. I'm not a big fan of that. Elijah Moore, I love that pick. I think Elijah Moore is explosive, crazy exciting. I thought he should have been a first round guy, um, fall into the second round only because guys in front of him have bigger names. I assure you that Elijah Moore will finish as a better wide receiver than half of the wide receivers taken in front of him. That's just going to happen. Go. This guy can. Tr- the game is is now going to a deep ball game, and this guy tracks the deep ball better than any dra- any wide receiver drafted this year. Nobody tracks the deep ball. He is Stefan Diggs 2.0 when it comes to tracking the deep ball. He goes and finds the football, and he runs to it. You don't have to throw it to him. Um, I think that's an amazing thing. Uh, Sherwood, the same thing. You're talking about a guy that played big boy college football at Auburn against LSU, against Alabama, against Georgia every year, against A&M every year. Um, he knows how to play defense. He's, he's been, you know, in some good schemes. He'll, he'll be able to play the rest of these guys. You know, they, they've got – they're just flyers, all right? They're, they're late-round yeah. guys that you're hoping a few of them can come in and play. And guess what? There's a really good shot for them, too, because there ain't a whole lot of depth on that team in front of them. So yeah. – Yep, you were right about that. Agreed. Don't don't forget also undrafted free agent Kenny Yaboa, uh, tight yeah, end. Like I, I, I thought Kenny Yaboa should have gotten drafted. Same Shocked here. He didn't. Yeah, that's that's a huge un, uh, 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 undrafted signing. Yes, nice. I agree. Uh, also, free agency for them. Uh, Greg Van Roten, right guard, brought him in, mm-hmm. uh, and then they they filled up their wide receiver room. Corey Davis, Jamison Crowder, Keelan Cole. Like they brought in some guys that have some experience that can probably help out Zach Wilson uh, quite a bit. Uh, they brought in Carl Lawson, you know, defensive edge help. I mean, they, this team looks uh, better on paper right now than they than they did any of the last three oh, years. Oh, well, right at like, the top, you have Robert Saleh, who is an absolute monster and a great defensive mind, replacing the pathetic and useless Adam Gase. So right there, I, right I, off I'm the top very, of the I'm board. I'm very curious to see the offensive uh, scheme that they're going to run and, and, and what yeah. they're going to do there because this is this is a guy I don't know a whole I'm, lot about. I'm trying to think of successful dual running backs taken from the same school. All I can think of is Jerome Bettis and Ray Zellers back in like 1992. Am I is there so anything the two, else? The, so the two most famous is Cadillac Williams, Ronnie Brown. Ah, uh, very and good. Yeah, Cadillac I think would have been fine, but his entire career in the NFL injuries, was injuries, yeah. and yeah. Ronnie was a stud with the Dolphins yeah. for a long yep. time. Um, yep. That's that's the only two that I can remember where both guys got into the NFL from the same class, and both guys were really good. Right. Cadillac being really good is very, you know, quotation. One or two good. years. He had the, he had a thousand yard year his rookie year, I think. Yes, didn't he? yes. Yep. When he yep. was healthy, he was a monster. But when he was, his availability was just non. It was just right. non-existent. Yep. Right. You are correct. All right. We are done with the AFC East. We are going to move to the NFC East, and we're going to start this thing off with the Washington football team. 
Now, obviously, my Washington football team, baby. I love this football team so Chris, much. Chris oh, has got like too. six teams, man. Six teams. Ron Rivera, of course, the second year head coach, uh, beat cancer last year. Always a good thing. And and I love what they are doing there. Obviously, we there wasn't a lot to like about Washington for a long time. And you bring in Ron Rivera, you get an adult in the room, and it changes mm, yep. the fortunes of the entire franchise. They make the playoffs last year. Um, the the quarterback. I think that they – everybody thought that they should go and draft a quarterback. It, that wasn't really a need in their eyes. They got Fitzpatrick, and they got uh, Heineke. Or is, is that how you say it, Kyle? Yeah, Ty, yeah. Tyler Heineke, Heineke. Heineke, whatever. Heineke, whatever. And so they're, they're treating him basically as a rookie. Uh, he was somebody who played mm-hmm. in the XFL, and and I think it's worth taking a shot on him. I mean, in the playoff game, at, they gave the the Bucks the most trouble of any team in the playoffs. That's and, right. And I was, I was impressed with what he was able to do getting a shot later on in the year, their uh, their needs were listed as quarterback. Again, explain that one. Safety, mm-hmm. offensive tackle, wide receiver, and linebacker. And here's what they did. First round, they went and got a linebacker, Jamin Davis out of Kentucky. And I like this guy. love this kid. He, uh, mm-hmm. hey, Chris, do you remember the interception return that kind of broke the back of Tennessee and basically yeah. ended the Jeremy Pruitt era? I, I was just about to say, yeah, this was... Uh, That's the linebacker. Gorantano is the one that threw that one, right? That would be correct. Okay, that would I be remember correct. it happened, but he came out. He got benched in that game. I was trying to think. Yes, did he, he did. Throw, I, I just he, assume all their interceptions. And, and this kid's anyway. a linebacker. I mean, he's he I is know. a bruising... Pound, and he caught it and ran it 70 yards back and has speed. Stud. He can cover. He's, he's an athlete, he can, man. He's a freak. Oh, he, and he will beat you to death. He's awesome. Yes. So I love him. Uh, offensive tackle in the second round, Samuel Cosme out of Texas. Like that pick. <laughs> a pretty big dude. I, I think that's – he's a super athletic offensive tackle. It's, I think that's what you're going to need with this offense uh, if they're moving the direction I think they are. Cornerback Benjamin St. Juiced out of Minnesota. Uh, third round, Deami Brown, wide receiver out of North Carolina. Another stud guy. They got him in the third round. Fourth round, tight end John Bates out of Boise State. Safety, Derek Forrest out of Cincinnati in the fourth round. Sixth round, now you start taking your flyers, right? Cameron Cheeseman, awesome man. <laughs> Long. Cheeseman uh, out of Michigan. Edge rusher in the seventh round, William Bradley King. This is a kid that transferred from Arkansas State over to Baylor and was lights out. A uh, really good player. I, I like the fact that they took a shot here. Uh, edge rusher Shaka Tony out of Penn State, another guy that produced at that level. Uh, wasn't highly looked at as, you know, a big-time draft pick, but he produced at the college level in the Big Ten. I, I'm a fan of him. And seventh-rounder wide receiver Dax Milne out of BYU. Uh, that's one of those kids that, that caught a bunch of touchdown passes from Zach Wilson. He was a lot bigger than most of the people that he played against, but uh, but he's a stud, absolute stud. They got some, they got some dudes. I am a fan of what Washington did here. I think that they, uh, I think they hit this thing. Yeah, I I like what Wash. I like this team too. This defense is going to be absolutely nasty. I do think next year you'll probably see this team as the best defense in the NFL. I thought they were one of the two. Them along with the Rams last year were probably the two best defenses. Maybe you could throw the Saints into that conversation. And then they just go out and bolster it even more. And look, they are one of the few, especially teams we expect to compete for a playoff spot who have no idea what their future quarterback is going to be. But they didn't reach here because teams forget. Guess what? Next year in the draft, there's going to be another five, six, seven guys who everyone needs to trade up for. And this is your court. So it happens every year. It's not like it's one year. This is the only year you can get a quarterback. And if you don't do it this year, you're screwed for the. No, that's absolutely ridiculous. And I love the Ryan Fitzpatrick signing. I thought it was absolutely phenomenal. They also signed William Jackson. This team is going to be tough. I love the kid, uh, Diami Brown, to go along with Terry McLaurin. Uh, they signed a free agent wide receiver. Curtis Samuel. Slipping. Curtis Samuel, thank yeah. you very much, out of Carolina. So this offense is going to be exponentially better. If they would have had Ryan Fitzpatrick at quarterback in that playoff game, they probably would have beaten the Bucs. I'm dead serious about that. Ooh, that's that defense won the damn Super Bowl, man. That, <laughs> that, well, let's say Tampa Bay got pretty lucky on the way there. A oh. very close game against Tyler Heineke. A missed pass interference call against the Saints. Where an in, Both interceptions by Sean Murphy Bunting, which swung both of those games, were missed pass interference calls that were were easy to see. I don't know what the refs were looking at and changed the dynamic of both of those games. 
I'm just saying Washington's defense is nasty. This is, in my opinion, they're the team to beat in the NFC East. I like their draft. I like their free agency. The only thing I don't like, how long does it, imagine if you had a kid and it took you a year and a half to give them a name. You just called it kid for a year and a half. That kid's going to be a serial killer. No, no, okay. No, 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 Straight no, no, up no, no, serial you're killer. Just, you're so give the wrong team right an here. A. You're so wrong right here. I love the football team. I absolutely love the football <laughs> team. I am abs- I'm in. I'm so in. I can't even explain it. Oh, I love boy. this team for one reason. What two reasons right now two of my favorite men and they're just football guys it is ron rivera and blackjack del rio baby this is this is without question going to be the best defense in the nfl because of those two men they are building this team the way they want to which is old school football tough guys that will bully the hell out of everybody these nfc east teams that are soft as hell have no clue what's about to hit them this year None at all. I do. I do agree with you. If they had a trigger man last year, that'd be a lot better. I think yeah. this offense is going to be so much better. I don't know how good Heineke can actually be, but I know this. Fitz Magic is. He's still got a lot of fight left in him. All right. He's still got plenty of life left in that arm and they've got some athletes on the outside. They've got a lot of speed at skill player position. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and I, I think the football team is really really good i am not a huge fan of the nfc i do not think it is nearly as as there aren't as many teams in the nfc that i think can win the conference as i think are in the afc i i would take a flyer shot on getting a super bowl ticket on this team okay we got to talk about this name thing though so let's say you get a cat from the lady across the street and you just name the cat hey cat but i got from lady. Cat. it's such a this big is, but hang on now this or, is not a hey, cat. kid who came out of my this wife's home like, no you can't name the kid that you can't this give him those team, basic and they're general. called the football team all right it's that WMT. kid would be a serial killer that's all it. i'm saying love it nope <laughs> that's fine this is not a child this is not a cat this is a football team what are they they're a football team. this is exactly mm-hmm. what i would think riverboat ron would come up with Yep. Uh, to win the Super Bowl, the football team. to win the Super Bowl, Washington is plus five thousand. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be a huge number. There's not a lot of teams in the NFC I love. Let's assume that there's a there's a fifty fifty chance that Aaron Rodgers isn't in Green Bay. Outside of Tampa Bay, tell me who you're in love with to win the Super Bowl right hey, now. Hey, I on, like the Rams. Uh, I don't love the Rams. Odds Rams to and win Forty Nine ers. They're going to be healthy, baby. Odds to win the NFC. You can get Washington at plus two thousand. I like that. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just telling you. Uh, like we all yeah. assume that Matt Stafford's gonna, gonna go and all of a sudden be this guy that he's never been before. I think he's gonna be way better than he's ever been. But, yeah. but let's just hold off on the fact that the guy's never won a playoff game. He's only made it yeah. to one or two playoff games in his yeah. life, and all of a sudden now he's gonna win a Super Bowl. Let's just chill the hell out, okay? Yeah, they're yeah. Uh, they're plus six fifty to get there. Same as the yeah. 49ers. I mean, he just got to be a little better than Jared Goff, which I feel like he can do. I, I feel pretty good about that because Jared Goff's a can. No, nah, but He's that terrible. team, hang on now. The team that they've got now is not not as good offensively it's as true. the team that Jared Goff had. That yeah. That's the difference is that Super Bowl team, that offense had like three weeks in a row where, where they put up like 40 or 50 points back to right. back to back. They had right. much better skilled players back then than sure. they do now. That is sure. true. That is true. Yep. The New York football giants. And Dave Gettleman has found a new trick. I don't know if you guys saw this. But he he traded back twice in this draft. He's never done it before. He he figured out, holy crap, people give me more picks for this one pick when I can trade back and get the same dude I wanted? Uh, Kind of interesting. Obviously, the giants uh, started to look a little bit better last year after Joe Judge, you know, took control of the team and whatnot. Uh, This is... A team with a very college mindset. Uh, they got a lot of dudes, uh-huh. and they want to push them. And, you know, we're all going to fight together, and we're, you know, da-da-da-da. Now, I don't know if that's necessarily going to work all the time, uh, but it seemed to work at some point, you know, middle of the year, where they started playing pretty hard for him. And, you know, I was a fan of it. I, I kind of like uh, seeing that that whole situation and yeah. the way that it went. They better play. If they don't play hard, he's going to make their grandparents do push-ups on the sidelines. That dude's a, <laughs> I don't know. I hate the way he approaches the game. It's so, like, you know. Oh, it's yeah. different. It's Some very Joe college. Judge. It's very college. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it it's different. And I don't know how long guys are going to want to play for him or, or how he can mm-hmm. be successful long-term. But, but last year? You know, it seemed to work for a little bit. Obviously, Giants fans were mad about the uh, the Eagles, 
you know, uh, last game deciding to take Jalen Hurts oh, out of the game. Everybody thought they threw mm-hmm. it, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, bottom line, Chris and I have talked about this. Uh, win more games. Win more games, yeah. then you don't have to worry about it. So, uh, don't draft Daniel Jones, okay? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, this, mean, hey, hang on, what, not just not, hang, on. De- hang on. Dave Gettleman was the guy that I was talking about that maybe is pretty good at drafting, but doesn't know what stuff is priced like. Yeah, like, exactly. Maybe Daniel Jones is not the worst guy you could have taken, but he was absolutely the worst guy you could take it at four. At exactly. Four. Yeah. Exactly. Hey, you, you know, uh, you know who they brought in to be his backup this year? No. Uh, Anybody want to take a stab at it? So it's not Colt McCoy anymore, nope. right? Nope. Sure not. Uh, I got no clue. No takers? No clue. I was going to look it up, but that's just cheating. I can't do that. Chase Daniel? No. Mike (laughs) Glennon. Mike Mike Glennon Glennon is the backup. Mike Glennon, the alien. There we go. There we go. This will be Daniel Jones. If you you look at Mike Glennon and you don't believe aliens are real, we (laughs) we cannot have a rational conversation about anything else ever. (laughs) What about Sam Cassell? The actual definition of an alien. It was Sam I'm Cassell. telling you this. I believe Mike Glennon's an alien. <laughs> the human body doesn't grow a neck like that or a head like that. Tyron Lue, Sam Cassell. Tell me there's no aliens. Yeah, exactly. Tyron Lue just, just doesn't know how to wear a suit. He looks all. like that guy. Remember in Men in Black when they blew his head off and then it grows back and yes. it's a little small and he's like, oh, man, that hurt. That's Tyron Lue. <laughs> Ty- I, I fully believe Tyron Lue is a normal built person. He just doesn't know how to wear a suit. It's like he's never met a tailor in his life. And so, so he just buys like the biggest suit he can find. And it looks like shit on him. But if he was wearing like jeans and a t-shirt, he'd look like a normal human being. Yes. Super funny. Yes. All right. So it's super funny. went six and 10 last year. They needed edge rushing help. They need a center guard linebacker. So basically what team is this? Who line the hell help. Are we talking? We're, we're talking about the Giants. Giants. Okay. Giants right? we're, we're still All on right. the Giants. Get you know. Um, yeah, so, yeah. so they trade back in the first round, and they end up with the Bears pick at number twenty, and they draft. You know, they they needed. I, I guess they needed wide receiver. I, I guess. Well, they just mm. paid for the most expensive they got Kenny free agent wide receiver on the on the market. Yeah, yeah. and they have Darius Slayton, and, and they, they have Sterling Shepard. And they brought so in I wasn't John Ross. Sure about this. Yeah, they brought I in John Ross. Did it. Um, and they they got Dante Pettis as well. They they signed him in the offseason. Um, <laughs> he sucks. No, you know, no. Eh, well, whatever. I mean, he's there. He, uh, he, I'm a 49er fan. Dante Pettis can go jump off a bridge into the water and hopefully survive and hopefully knows how to swim, but go swim to an Island and never play football again. He's useless. Absolutely <laughs> useless. So they draft wide receiver Kadarius, Tony, who Chris and I, uh, you know, we're fans of, I mean, he can absolutely move. He can, he's insanely athletic, super quick guy. Uh, don't know that he was worth the pick at 20, but, mm-hmm. you know, we'll see. Like, he, he developed a lot in 2020. I mean, he, I think he's still got a long way to go as far as his development, but, I mean, you got a guy. Uh, second round, you got edge rusher Aziz Ojalari out of Georgia. I like that pick quite a bit. Third round, Aaron Robinson, cornerback out of UCF. Fourth round, edge rusher Ellerson Smith out of Northern Iowa. This is another guy. It, those, those kids at Northern Iowa, man, Something else. If you're not watching FCS football, there's some of these teams that you just got to pay attention to. Uh, well, you got something drag going racing on. going on. <laughs> yeah, there's some drag race. My house is right next to a school, and you wouldn't believe how the people drive on this street. It's absolutely crap. That happened right next to a school. <laughs> yeah, my, there's a school, oh, and the, that's what these people do. You don't know how that's many nuts. fights I've gotten to in the front of my house, screaming at these assholes not to speed up and down this road. It's ridiculous. I can believe it. I can believe this it. is a this is a drinking on the front porch situation where you throw empty beer bottles at. Them. I do yep. a lot of it. I do a lot of it. <laughs> this is and one guy. One on the sometimes they'll slam on their brakes when they yell and get all mouthy. And one guy, I started okay. walking up in my flip flops, and his girlfriend goes, "Honey, drive away. This guy's gonna beat you up like you got beat up last week." <laughs> like, like, yeah, you were gonna get beat up. Running yeah, back, he, and hold on, sixth how, round. Let me get back to <laughs> circle this sorry, thing sorry, back sorry, around. Yes. Yeah, we can, we can sit and talk all day long. We, we need to start having you on regular shows so that we can just bullshit the whole time. I'd be all about exactly. that. Uh, sixth round, we got running back Gary Brightwell out of Arizona. Eh, take a flyer, I guess. Uh, mm. Sixth round, Radarius Williams out of Oklahoma State. He's a cornerback. So you got a couple of flyers late. Uh, other than that, I think they did okay. Like, I, you know, yeah. not as many picks as I would have been a fan of. Um, you know, it's not my favorite draft mm. by any stretch of the imagination. I think I, I think the I players they got Arizona got a player drafted. I mean, yeah, it doesn't surprise me. The team was awful. Yeah, but they got the team talent. Was awful. They got talent. They just yeah. weren't coached well at all. I don't all. know that they have talent. They don't I have mean, a ton we're of. We're going to disagree with the word talent. I don't think you're using that mm. right. <laughs> all right. So, so I will Kyle, say, I'll say about this draft. I'll keep it pretty short. So it's meh. 
I don't yeah. think they really filled many of the needs they really have here. You didn't no. need – like, look, Daniel Jones doesn't suck because the wide receivers were bad. They had plenty of wide receivers and tight ends and everything you could need. He's just not a good decision maker, and he's not very well coached by Joe Judge. Plain and simple, end of story. And, you know, you bring in Jason Garrett to be your offensive coordinator. What do you think you're going to see development? No, you're not. Freddie I always Kitchens say, as an offensive uh, analyst. and uh, Yeah, Freddie coach. Kitchens. Yeah. I mean, come on. Jason Garrett looks like the guy who uses a whole roll of toilet paper to cover the toilet seat in a public bathroom. He looks like a germaphobe. <laughs> but uh, I, I, he really does. But uh, I, I thought it was meh. I mean, the best part about the draft is that he traded down and got more assets for next year, et cetera. And I think that's the best thing that he did and sort of got rid of that stigma that he'll never trade down and never do the right thing. Well, could Tony be a super explosive player and just absolutely. I, but I don't think this is going to improve their win total next year. I don't think this makes them exponentially better in the future. It's a sort of meh for me. Hey, why, why do you think he didn't go after any offensive line help in this draft? Like they didn't sign uh, anybody really in the off season. Um, I, you know, they, they brought in Zach Fulton, who's a guard out of Houston, but, like, I... I, I, I don't get it. Did I, 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 did I, I miss something? I should have been all offensive linemen as far as I'm concerned. You, I mean, look what you had happen last year. Your star running back, the main piece of your offense, injured for most of the year. Daniel Jones, always running for his life, ended up being your lead rusher. Oh, Wayne Gallman was okay. He's now with the 49ers. But, yeah, I mean... Did they have guys back, hurt last year? Like is is that? Yeah, I mean the the Giants were a mess, but defensive back wasn't their problem. If you remember, that defense actually got a lot yeah, better. Yeah, and it defense, was hard to throw. Yeah. It was hard to throw on that secondary. So I'm not. And the biggest issue for me sure. was was the offensive line, and I just I was kind of you know concerned that they didn't mm-hmm. do anything to look, short look, up. If you're it, listen, hang on. If you're going to spend the number four overall pick one year on 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 uh, Daniel, Daniel Jones. Jones, and then the number two overall pick on a running back, I don't care how good Saquon Barkley is, he could be the second coming of Jim Brown. It doesn't matter. You do not yeah. spend the number two overall pick on a running back. David Gettleman is a moron. If you're the mm-hmm. organization, you're very happy that he got you new assets for next year so you can fire his ass and hire somebody who knows how to build a team. Yeah, I tend I to agree. agree. Chris, you, you got anything else about uh, about the Giants here? Yeah, I don't like this draft. I don't like this. I don't like what they did at all. It, it, it's not that Tony's not good. I think Tony's probably good. I think there's a lot of well, wide receivers I like that went behind him a lot, but not a little better than him, a lot better than him. Um, and the the other part of it is is I don't, I don't know what he's trying to do. You, you talk about plan. I don't know what the plan is here outside of let's build more assets for next year and the year after because we're not really sure what our team is supposed to look like, but that's because you cocked up the two drafts in previous years. So th- this is the reason your team doesn't have any like real cohesion. You just spent the most free agent money that anybody in the league spent on a wide receiver. Then you're going to spend your most valuable draft pick on that same position. What are we like? That doesn't make any sense. None. And what's wrong with Slayton and Shepard? They're both really good young players. They're, they're both fine. They're both fine. I mean, if yeah. you think that having the best wide receiver, let's say he, let's say this draft pick makes them have the best wide receiving core in the league. Do you think that team that makes that team that much better? No, Daniel because Jones is I your don't, quarterback. Because you have yep. too many other holes. Yeah, yep. I, I tend to exactly. agree. I would have liked more bites at the apple. This, this year. is a really good offensive line draft. There's no reason for them to have not taken an O lineman. This mm-hmm. is not. Yeah, I tend, I tend to I agree. I really wish they would have taken one at, at 14 or back, back where they were instead of selling to Chicago. So mm-hmm. then Fields falls to the Patriots. Yeah. Ah, there you go. <laughs> I see the real reasoning behind, behind what mm-hmm. you wanted. The Dallas Cowboys, America's team. They got Dak Prescott coming back. That's a good thing. The offense last season, even with Andy Dalton, was not the issue. The offense was able to put up points. The issue was defense, and obviously they did not pick up the fifth-year option on, uh, 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 my God, I went blank. What's the guy's name? Van Der Esch, uh, right? Uh, Leighton Van Der Esch, yeah. yeah. So didn't pick up the uh, the option on him, and Sean Lee decided he's going to retire, but he was never available anyway. So, you know, you had holes that you needed to, to fill up uh, in free agency, they went out and they got Carlos Watkins, defensive tackle out of Houston. Uh, I think that was okay, but they had a bunch of holes on defense that they needed to fill. Their first six picks all went defense. Uh, their needs were cornerback, safety, defensive tackle, linebacker, and they needed an offensive tackle. Okay, you know, tackle uh, for offense, I, I think that they've got it short up, but either way, they, uh, 
they drafted in the first round Micah Parsons out of Penn State, who, I, honestly, last year, I would have thought he would have been a top five guy. He is a monster. And I, getting him at 12 is an insane value pick. You, you were able to move backwards and still pick this guy up. I think it's a great pick. They got Kelvin Joseph, cornerback out of Kentucky in the second round, and he's a stud. Uh, you got defensive interior lineman Osa Odigizua out of UCLA wow. in the third round. You got Chauncey Golston, edge rusher out of Iowa in the third round. Late third round, you got Nashawn Wright, cornerback out of Oregon State. And then in the fourth round, you got linebacker Jabril Cox out of LSU, who actually transferred to LSU last year from North Dakota State, where he was a stud there as well. Uh, played well for LSU last year. That scheme was awful for uh, yep. for Chris's Tigers last year. But fourth round, you got offensive tackle Josh Ball out of Marshall. Uh, Marshall was able to run the ball down people's throats last year. So he is a stud. Uh, Simi Feoko out of Stanford, wide receiver in the fifth round. And then you start taking your flyers, right? Defensive lineman Quinton Bohanna out of Kentucky. Israel Muk- uh, Mukuamu out of South Carolina. Uh, played well with South Carolina. I've watched him multiple times. Could not begin to pronounce his name, but, you know, could be a stud. Well, maybe not. Uh, mm-hmm. And then Matt Farniak out of Nebraska, offensive guard in the seventh round. Another guy to take a flyer on. He's a big hog molly. You know how that goes. I, I think the Cowboys did well. I love teams that, one, I can see the strategy, right? They, they needed to shore up mm-hmm. defense. Hey, your first six picks are all defense, and they're all in the first three rounds, first, you know, early fourth round. Um, I'm a fan of that. And on top of that, you know, I think they got some dudes. So I I, yep. I like what the Cowboys did. I think it was okay. Yeah, I thought Cowboy. this is probably Jerry Jones' best draft since they got Dak in the fourth round. This was an absolutely fantastic, and it's surprising almost because we know how Jerry Jones is, and he always wants to take the flashy guy and wants to take this guy his team doesn't need, and that is not what they did. That defense was the second worst run defense in the league last year. They couldn't stop anyone in the passing game either. And they just come out, and you nailed it right on the head. Their first six picks on defense, they only took two players on the offensive side, or three players, excuse me, on the offensive side of the ball. Two of those were linemen and then a late flyer on a wide receiver they don't need. Good job by the Cowboys. This is absolutely what they needed to do. They focused on the right side of the ball, did it hard. Six players, (laughs) title of your sex tape, did it hard through the first four rounds. Uh, Love what the Cowboys did here. One of the better drafts in this division. Um, I, if not the best draft in the division, just based on getting needs and not doing the dumb thing that the Cowboys usually did. So as much as I hate to say it, and as much as I can't stand the Cowboys or Cowboys fans, I do like what the Cowboys did here. Yeah, I'm the, I'm the same way. I think they did have the best draft in this division. Um, th- this is the first time that it looks like Jerry got absolutely out of the way and uh, people around the organization began to make picks. Um, they went after their needs. I think they filled their needs well. I like Mar- Micah Parsons a lot. I think he's going to be fine. Um, like I said, Gary said this earlier, if he came out last year, he's a top five pick. So right. it, the fact that, that he came out this year, he sat out, whatever, it was weird. It, it, Wasn't there some, like, fight or something he incited yeah, he, or something he got, he got, and people got freaked out? A little bit. He, it was not just fight. There was uh, some hazing, hazing. That, went, had, yeah. that went on in the gotcha. locker room that, that had some sexual allocations to it. Um, but anyway, the, the cornerback from Kentucky, Joseph's going to be really good. Uh, Mark Stoops has put defensive players in the NFL, and every one of them have been absolute pros. Uh, they might not be pro bowl guys, but they're all making rosters. They're all starting or getting lots of snaps uh, on the teams for the last two or three years. And and I think he's just going to keep doing that. He's he's turning things around in Kentucky. Love what he's doing there. Um, and yeah, I, I I like what the Cowboys are doing. I don't I don't know how much it affects wins and and losses this year because sure. these are all rookies some right. of them are going to come in play well immediately and some of them are going to take a year or two to actually have an effect on the outcome of games for this yeah. team which means do i think they can still score 45 a game probably do i still think they're going to get beat 48 to 45 a lot yeah yep, yep. yeah i tend to agree You'll be an over monster you'll just be hitting overs with this cowboys team next year oh, just hitting oh, the overs. That right. it, it, yep. do you think the books are ever going to get the balls to actually just start jacking these numbers up because they well, never really make them that big. It, start, it starts getting there. Like, let's just say eight years ago, you didn't, when you saw a total of 45, 44 and a half, you're like, yeah. ooh, 
that's really iffy. Now you see that like, okay, I've got to figure out a way to talk myself into this because now it's 54 and a half, 56 and a half. Yeah. Shit, you never thought you would see 10 never years thought. ago. You're seeing it consistently across the board this year. Sure. And you're going to see a lot of that with this Cowboys team, especially with that. Oh, guy. no, if it's in the 50s, it's over because they're scoring yeah. 25 and they're losing by at least a touchdown in that game. Right. I agree. Exactly. I agree. The Philadelphia Eagles will close out the NFC East and our draft reactions for this season. Um, the Eagles, you know, 4-11-1 last year. They fired Doug Peterson, and they go back to the well. They go and grab Nick Sirianni, who was the offensive coordinator for Frank Reich for the last three years at Indianapolis. Uh, you know, I guess if you had something that worked before, why not go back and, and try the same thing all over again? I, sure, why not? You know, you won a Super Bowl with Frank Reich as your offensive coordinator. Well, just bring in Frank's offensive coordinator when he was a head coach, and maybe it'll work out. Who knows? Yeah. Um they had a lot of needs, you know. I, I, I'm guessing, you know, quarterback probably a need. They didn't do anything with that, but okay, you know, whatever. Cornerback, wide receiver, tight end, and linebacker were the needs that uh, basically the masses uh, said that they would need. And here's what they did. First round, they go and get Devontae Smith out of Alabama. I think it's a pretty good pick. Elite wide receiver. Yep. He's kind of on the small side, but today's game, a lot different than it used to be. You can weigh 166 mm -hmm. pounds and still be an impact guy. Uh, interior offensive lineman Landon Dickerson. He played center at Alabama, but he's also a guard, uh, so you can kind of move him around wherever you need him to be. Uh, they got him mm -hmm. in the second round. Defensive lineman Milton Williams out of uh, Louisiana Tech. This kid's a stud. They got him in the third round. Uh, not a lot of people going to know his name, but he can play. He can absolutely ball. Cornerback Zach McPherson out of Texas Tech. Not sure about that one, but, I mean, if you see, the, you see something with him that you like, okay, that's cool. I, I don't... I didn't see him make a bunch of plays last year, but uh, either way, it could have just been the team he was on. Kenneth Gamewell, yeah. running back out of Memphis that they got in the fifth round, he was a redshirt freshman and absolutely lit college football on fire. He was the superstar of the team when Memphis went 13-1 two years ago, sat out this past year due to COVID concerns, um, and and now, of course, he goes fifth round. I think the Eagles got a stud here. I mean, I, I've this said the is, term. This is, this is the definition of why you don't spend first round assets on running exactly games. because yes. guys like this are in the fifth round. Lightning all bolt the time. Lightning the time. bolt. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, Marlon Tui Peloti. Uh, excuse me, Tui. <laughs> Pretty Pelotti, close, I think. Uh, at a USC uh, defensive lineman. There, uh, they got him in the sixth. This is where you start taking flyers on guys. Edge rusher Taryn Jackson out of Coastal Carolina. I think this kid's awesome. Perfect guy to take a, a stab at. I think he's awesome. I think he's absolutely – I mean, he made that Coastal Carolina defense last year. Uh, sixth round, Jacoby Stevens out of LSU. Um, I think he fell to the sixth round basically due to the scheme that LSU had last year uh, because I think a year prior – I mean, Jacoby Stevens played great. In 2019. Yeah, I was just about to say, yeah, 2019, that 2019 special team, he was unbelievable. Yes, yes, and, he was. Last year, they, they just, they did him no justice. No, they did not. Uh, and then, of course, they got edge rusher Patrick Johnson out of Tulane in the seventh round. Um, the Eagles look like, you know, with this draft, they they look like they're competent right now. And, and I don't know that they've always looked like that uh, in the past couple of years, but... This year, I mean, they, they got some dudes, and, and they're taking mm -hmm. some chances on some guys that can really hit. There's some boomer bust guys in here, but I, I'm a fan. I like it. Yeah, me too. And look, if, if you go off what the Eagles looked like the past two years, it's they looked like Doug Peterson, which means they look like divorce. That's what Doug Peterson looks like <laughs> is divorce. He just looks like divorce and whiskey right there. That's him. Uh, but I love this draft for the Eagles. I love Devontae Smith. Now, I know he's a little undersized, but when I – the limited college football I watched last year – and they were Alabama games, this looked like varsity versus the freshman team. This guy gets open. He kind of reminds me of when the year that Antonio Brown, Le'Veon Bell, and Big Ben were just going off in Pittsburgh, and Antonio Brown was absolutely unstoppable. He reminds me of that version of Antonio Brown without the behavioral issues. I love Devontae Smith. The Eagles have absolutely needed to get a sure fire wide. You couldn't come out here again and take some no-namer like a Jalen Rager over a Justin Jefferson again. You cannot make that mistake again. I think they nailed it with this pick in Devontae Smith. I absolutely love it. Dickerson in the second round, if this kid hadn't hurt his ACL, he probably would have been a first-round pick. So I really like that. They need offensive line help. Try to keep Miles Sanders healthy, of course. It looks like you're going all in with Jalen Hurts because you don't want to have to bring in Joe Flacco, who just went there to be the backup. <laughs> uh, nobody wants to see that. So I like what the Eagles did. 
Uh, I thought it was a good draft. Uh, finally, Howie Roseman and company did a good job here. Uh, Devontae Smith, just really, I love that kid. He's one of my favorite players to watch. I just, I don't care what his size is. I think he has a real shot to be rookie of the year. Like the Eagles draft, uh, I thought they did a good job. And look, the NFC East is wide open next year. The, uh, none of these teams are great teams, but they all have a chance. You know, it's going to be another 9-8, and 10-7 and seven, uh, type winner in this division. And the Eagles, if Jalen Hurts can stay upright and that secondary can stop people, might have a chance. Hey, by the way, uh, Roseman and that bunch, uh, on top of the draft, they're undrafted guys that they brought in pretty good as well. They got Trevon Grimes out of Florida. Uh, that kid's a playmaker. And they brought in Jamie Newman, who was the quarterback that transferred to Georgia. He was at Wake Forest, and everybody kind of slotted him in. He was like a, a top-five PFF guy at coming back to college and opted mm. out for COVID concerns and whatnot. And everybody thought he was going to be first or second-round guy. He opts out. He doesn't even get drafted. And they, they brought him in, gave him a shot. I I mean, I'm a fan. Mm, I like it. Yeah, I uh, I definitely spent a uh, a, a waiver substantial amount of my waiver fab in my dynasty league on picking up Jamie Newman. I, I just I want I want a guy that I think is a good quarterback playing behind a guy that I don't think is a good quarterback. So sure, neither here nor there. Yeah. Um, yeah. I like what they did. I absolutely like what they did. I think they're a quarterback away from being really good. I think Jalen mm-hmm. Hurts is a great guy. It's it sucks that we live in a world we got to put this caveat in there because you can't talk shit about a guy's ability because it mm-hmm. makes you think that oh well if he's such a nice guy you're an asshole for thinking he's not great at football. Mm-hmm. Told you the pussification of America. It's yep. absolutely. I, I, I think he's a great guy. I think this year he's going to struggle really badly. Killous. I think the NFL got to watch him play football for a year. When we get tape on guys, when the league gets tape on guys that are very limited in what they're able to do, it. It, it's almost like clockwork that those dudes get shut down, and they get shut down bad. Yeah, I tend to agree. I, got, I love Jalen Hurts. You know I do. But, uh, yeah. but, Chris, I've told you on our show for years that he is not an NFL quarterback. He's, like, he's not an not. NFL quarterback. He's a crazy, yeah. stupid athlete, but he is not an NFL quarterback. Yeah, he can run. He can show run, but he, he can't throw. So, so. – that uh that wraps up our draft coverage for this year. Uh, Kyle, this has been a hell of a lot of fun. A hell of a lot of fun. I've enjoyed this. I've enjoyed the hell out of this. I've been waiting to this. Home, man. I love you guys, and I love being on. So anytime I will be on, you guys just send me the word, and I'll be here. I love work, sure. and you guys do a great job. Make sure, if you're watching on my channel too, go to sbrpicks.com forward slash NCAAF. F- Yep. Right. Yep. I always get that shit wrong. I always get it wrong, <laughs> but uh, I love these guys and they know what they talk about in college football. They're, they're the only place I go to. If I'm betting college, these are who I go to. Right. That here. is what I'm talking about. That is what I'm talking about. Gentlemen, is there anything else that we need to hit on today? That's it, brother. That is it. Well, let's, uh, That's let's it. wind this thing down then. All right. You guys go to winningcureseverything.com. Go to sbrpicks.com slash NCAAF slash NFL slash MLB and Head over to the DFS Bachelor YouTube page. Make sure you check that out. And, of course, you can always follow Kyle on Twitter at DFS Bachelor. You can follow myself and Chris. We don't say this enough, but at Chris B. Giannini and at Gary WCE. Very easy to do. We would love to hear from you. Jump in the comments. We want to hear what you think about this. We've had a lot of people that are commenting and telling us that we're dead wrong. Tell us how we're dead mm-hmm. wrong. I'd love to hear it. That's I'd it. love to hear it. So, you guys yeah. have been fantastic for tuning in. Kyle... Chris, thanks for the time. And uh, you guys take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and, and hopefully all of your tickets cash this week. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com, or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.